Hello there, I proudly welcome you to another Microsoft Facet Database tutorial brought to you by Datex. My name is Saku Smiler. I'm going to take you through this tutorial. In this tutorial, which is slightly going to be a lengthy video, um, it is actually recorded to be a response to several questions and demands that people have been making or my followers have been making via the YouTube channel that I uh, make videos explaining to you guys how to come by a student's management database just as our application in Microsoft Access although this particular tutorial is not going to give you all that you would need in coming out with an authentic uh, database application as the one that is in our playlist but then uh, I do promise you that at the, this, at the end of this particular video you'll be able to have a uh, well structured and mini system that you can use to manage your student's information we're working on actually coming by coming out with a very solid course uh, that will teach you the whole application development process as we have in the, our playlist so just uh, stay tuned to the channel and then uh, make best use, make good use of any of the videos that will be uploaded. So now, student management database, you are going to learn how to, at the end of this video, like I said, you'll be able to uh, develop your own database system in Microsoft Access to manage your student information and you stand to have these features in there. So as far as the tutorial is concerned, we shall be this, uh, we are, the objective is that at the end of this video, we will be able to complete all this model. In model number one, we'll be looking at how to manage students' information and printing their profiles. And then model number two, how to assign students to classes, that is student class management. Then model model number three, students as students, assigning students to departments. Then model number four, students and parents relationships. So you stay tuned and just sip your tea or any liquid that you have at your end right now as you're watching let us delve into the tutorial like i said subscribe and follow okay so now we are going to develop everything from scratch so i'll exit to my uh, desktop uh, right click so we start by creating a blank microsoft Access database and then uh, how we do it you can choose to open microsoft Access and then follow from uh, from scratch there but then i will just create a file directly on my desktop as i'll be doing so right click here a quick way you go to new now i select microsoft access so okay so here you are creating a new microsoft access file so give it a name i'm going to call it so students so students database okay so we are going to call this one a student database uh, I will try as much as possible to put a link to this particular file I'll be working on in the tutorial in the description. So, can we do all to access the file uh, via the link in the description? Okay, so now that we are done, we right click and then open into the blank database that we just created. Okay, so this is a very blank database as you can see, there's no objects in here. So you click enable content to enable everything here. Okay, now that before we come in to create the tables and the forms and the reports or the objects, uh, let us actually set the title to display only the student database and get rid of the file root here. So to do that, you go to the backstage view by clicking file, you move to options. So in here, you go to current database. Now application title, you just type the name of the application you wish to see on the title bar. So it says student database so database system okay so you can upload application icon but then before you upload application icon your picture will have to be in some form as a bitmap uh, so if you are able to if you want to set any picture as an icon you will have to first get the picture as a bitmap then upload it over here but then uh, in this tutorial uh, that is not going to be our focus here so click ok Okay, so now you can see we have student database system. So those of us that are new to Microsoft Access, I would love that you check in the playlist and work some of the basic tutorials that you recorded in Microsoft Access. But then um, for us to uh, for us to move at the same pace, let me first take some few uh, seconds or minutes of uh, the tutorial length to take you through, uh, walk you through the Microsoft Access interface. So here we have the uh, Quick access to bar here. Then we also have uh, the ribbon, and on top of the ribbon, we have a slide, a little menu bar here that has the file home, crease, standard, and 
and then the database tools then uh, just as in any office program we have the ribbon segregated into groups we have the view group clipboard sort of filter and if you click any of this tab here you have special groupings as such so now um, we also have the status bar here and what you see over here is the object pane so as we start creating objects you see that they will be populating up over here okay so we we'll get moving so now let us for us not to miss the targets of the video we shall be constantly switching across the microsoft web file that we have here so managing students information and printing profiles but then before we can assign students to classes first we are going to start from the bottom so we are going to start by creating the classes and the department table and the parents table before we come and create the students information and the goal of this tutorial is for us to get a database that will help us manage our students okay so because basically we'll be assigning students to classes and departments and appearance, which means that those tables have to be in there. Such structures have to be the first ones to be created. Okay, so we go to table design. We're going to play, create a table for class. So here yeah, I'll say class ID. So so class ID. You would have been you, you would have been told in most of your database classes that uh, you don't leave spaces when uh, naming your fields or your column or your attribute whereas this uh, in microsoft access you can actually keep to that same norm but then that is not a requisite you are actually good to go if you leave spaces out there but then uh, let us for us not to deviate from i mean the established norms in our class so we we'll just click to delete the spaces here but then in as much as you've actually done this if you want to display in the data sheets with the space in between class and the id then what you need to do is that you come to the caption of that particular field then you type over here class id so although the name of the field there is no spacing but then the class id you can see that has space in there that is a caption so the caption will actually show as the attributes name now i'll click here to make it a primary key and the data type i'll click here and then make it auto number all right so now let me save it Control s to save now I'll give it a name if you don't want to use Control s then you can also come right here right click click save so i'll say classes okay so now before we come and add the class names and other fields let me show you something here so now you can see class id has a name it has a space between the letters out there uh, the words out there although there's no space in there because of the caption that we see so that is how to set caption so now we say class title so class title now class title will be a short test so class title will be a short test so for now uh this is what we need so we will just be assigning our classes then we specify the class title okay so moving on we'll be also assigning the classes to department because the classes will definitely be in departments okay so now click view here sorry we'll save first okay so let us actually add uh, some couple of classes here so for instance i will say class one i will say class two i will say class three okay so i will be sticking to these few classes here now we do the same thing for department so we go to create table design so here we say depth id auto number now we click here we make it a primary key so here also we set a caption so depth id okay or department id then we say department so department name which is a short test so you can also choose to add some description over here so now that we have this one here sorry we wouldn't be leaving any space here so but then I will come to the caption and I will type department department name. Okay, so department name will now have a short test. Okay, so here too, uh, we're supposed to have saved it, but then you must, if you click view, if the changes are not saved, you'll be asked to you'll be prompted by the system to save. So you click here to save. Now I'll call it department. Okay, good. So now let us enter some couple of departments. So you can see that 
the column name department is actually spelled wrongly you can right click here and go to the design view to make the change you can just change it right in here okay so it means that the spelling mistake was actually done at this side so we do the amendment and i will go back again so first department let's say primary so primary so let's say so let's say g dot h dot s now let's say lower primary so upper primary now let's say nursery okay so let's stick to this few departments so let's make this one also uppercase primary okay so now we have our department over here you can choose to add a lot of uh, attributes or columns to describe your department but then we are just going to stick to this few these are just the requisite that we need the department name and then also the department id okay so now we are going to assign department to classes so there has to be that hierarchy there so each of these classes here uh, need to be assigned to a department so we go to design view okay so here we say departments okay so departments now right in here you come to look up but before then you make the data type first need to be number because there has to be some relationship built so number then you come to the display control make sure lookup is selected you make click in here we select combo box okay so here in combo box you make sure table or query is set as the resource type now resource you click the builder icon here so it opens now right in here you can build a very basic query to uh, assign a record source to the lookup so you click departments now right in departments because of the relationship i want to build i will add a department id and department name here now control s to save and i'll close okay so having done this so having done this now bound column you set it to one and the column counts he set it to two okay so column heads no column widths so column width we set it to zero then one okay it is zero one because we would not like the department id to actually show we would need only the department's name that is the reason why it is zero one so here we save now let us preview the data sheets you see so as soon as you click here now you can assign your classes to departments so for instance class 2 is in primary department class 3 is also in primary department so let's say ghs ghs1 so ghs1 will be in the ghs department so now that is class to department management okay so now if department so the next thing is for us to get the parent so we go to create table design so now here i will just say id and then it's going to be auto number i'll make this a primary key all right so here i'll say parent name i'll leave the spaces out here although i've already shown you how to set a caption okay but then like i said if you just deviate from the database creation attribute name and norm by leaving spaces nothing will really happen your that this works only in microsoft access but then if we are in a confinement of solid environment that uses sql there shouldn't be any spaces up here okay so parent name now we say occupation so these are going to be the parents of the children so occupation short test now address so short test then also now town short says or oh, so the town let me give some description here this is the current place abode of a parent okay 
So this is a current place of abode of a parent. Now let us save the parent table. So we click save. So in here we say parents. Okay. Now we need to be able to specify whether a particular parent is father or mother. Whether a parent is father or mother. So in here we say parents parent type. So here in parent type, it is going to be a lookup. So you click right in here, you go to lookup wizard. Now here in lookup wizard, go to I'll type in the values that I want. So you specify now we say father or mother. Okay. So father or mother. Now we limit to list. We are limiting to list because a parent can only belong to one of the categories there only. So we have to, if you select allow multiple values, it means that a, per a person can either, the user will be able to tick both mother and father, which is wrong. So the hierarchy is that we need to be able to assign parents as either mother or father. So having done that, we click finish. Okay. Now we have, I will add gender. So before then, let's add, you let's add a gender. So this gender will come automatically. So we are going to use a calculated field. So here, we'll go to calculated. Okay, so let us use an if statement here. So gender is male or female, but then if the parent type is mother, then automatically the gender has to be female. If it is father, then the gender has to be a male. So we say if parents, so let's put it in square brackets here. If parents type, so Microsoft process is case insensitive. So although uh, we are we've actually missed the cases over here, it is not really going to cause any problem. So if the parent type is equal to male, then what must be the value in the gender field? So sorry, if it is equal to father, if it is equal to father then the true part has to be a male so else we say parent is a female so that is the gender now we hit ok so our expression is accepted successfully that is it over here all right now let us take the telephone numbers of the parents so here in ghana here the full size of a telephone fail or telephone contain 10 characters so Standard here, I will stick to 10. Now, email address. So, email address of the parents. So, we can leave it as short test for now. All right. So, now these are some few information that will be taken about the parents. Okay. So, we save it. Now, you, have, you need to um, bear in mind that or know that. Uh, although it appears that I'm not saving the changes that I'm making, but then gradually, whichever change that I make, I do press Ctrl S because I want to avoid a situation whereby uh, any misfortune will really cause me losing my uh, changes. So, if you don't really want to incur challenges, then you do your possible best to be pressing Ctrl S each time that you make a change. Okay, or else you can also choose to finish everything right click here, then click Save. Now we are done. Let's go to the data sheet view to see how good this particular uh, parent table is also looking. So good, we are on track. So I will add myself as the first. So I say I will smile at first parent occupation. Uh, so occupation developer. Now address I will say Kaswa New Town. Although this is not a permanent address, this is actually a fictitious one. So, town, I'll say Kaswa. So, parent type, I'll choose father. So, if I choose father, you can see that it is male here. Now, if I choose mother, you can see that it's what female here. Okay. So, the telephone numbers, you add it here. So, let's say 0 to. All right. So, now you can see that it's up to 10. So if, as soon as it gets to 10, I cannot continue again and it beeps. I add an email address also over here. So let me add another one. So let's say Mary in cancer. So here I'll say nursing. 
so kumase so kumase again now here is a mother so sorry myself i was a father so father then here is a mother i'll enter zero two four so these are fictitious uh counter that are actually being recorded over here okay so now we'll just be sticking to uh these few parents now before we get to the student session let us first create forms for these three tables that we've actually created so first we create a form for the parents as soon as we're done because we shall be sticking to uh uniform design we'll just be copying and then changing the record source of the form that is going to speed up your development process okay it is a tip and now we uncover it going forward okay so we open the parents table we are going to create a form for it now you know the purpose of forms is one to add a touch to your design make it attractive and also to speed up the detail entry processes you know at the end of uh, the database development process it will be deployed in your company and there are people that have no uh, knowledge about Microsoft has to be assessing it for you to actually make their life so easy around your system there has to be some forms that uh, they can actually use to communicate uh, with your back end and forms are basically meant for data entry and not printing if you want to just generate a printout from your database you will have to stick to a report okay so now here I will click create so let me first check a recording okay so we are good to go now I click form wizard all right so here i'll click here to add all the items here to the form so selected fields means that these fields are going to appear if you had wanted to add it one by one then it means that you highlight it with a dark color or a dark line you click here so all right now once you're done you click proceed by clicking this so here are some types of forms that you can actually stick to so you can create a columnar form tabular data sheet but then here parents we need a columnar form so we go to yes now you can choose to open this form directly or modify the form design so i'll click finish okay so this is a form that microsoft has by default has just created for me but as you can see it is not really good look it's not really good looking so let us get to the back end and then modify it a bit so the first thing that we'll be doing at the design view is to get rid of this particular bar over here so we go to design view now we click here now i come to the property sheet formats you locate record selector you click and you set it to no so now once you go to the form, you can see there's no record selector out here. So let us get on to improve the design. Okay, the next thing that I will do is to remove what we have in here. Now I will leave a very little space here. I will select everything that we have here. Right click, size, you go to shortest. So now you can see they've all, what's, uh, they've all been set to the same sizes. So now let us also send, set the horizontal length to be the same so you go to size then go to widest okay so now we can choose to narrow it a bit now the next thing i will do is to pull everything closer so pull everything closer to make it indeed a good looking form okay so let me hit the back up arrow key now we push everything here so let's push this one here as such okay so the next thing that we'll do now we are going to design this particular uh, form so what we'll do is i'll click here rectangle from the design controls so you click rectangle now i would add a very simple rectangle here okay then i'll stretch it across now once you have the rectangle selected you go to formats shape fill i'm going to fill it with the blue color now horizontal anchor you set it to boot okay so having done that now you can set the color over here to to black 
Okay. So this time around, you can choose to pull this one closer. And we spread this a bit so that we can get somewhere to put our buttons. Okay. So now, let me narrow the size here a bit. If you go to the design view, form view, sorry, you can see that the form is really looking what's catchy now. So let us make it a pop-up form. So we click here. Property sheet other pop-up, we set it to yes. And now let's see what it does. Okay, so now you can see that your form now looks like this. The next step is that we are going to get rid of this navigation bar that we have out here. So we go to design view. So design view, navigation button, we set it to no. So if we do that, scroll bars, we set it to none because we wouldn't need any scroll bars. So here yeah, we go. To, uh, so as you can see, this is how the form is now looking. So you can also choose to uh, disable the minimize and then the maximize by going to the design view, make sure everything is selected. So here we can see we have format session. We have minimum and maximum. So minimum, maximum, you can choose to show only minimum. Okay. Now, having done this, I will select everything here. Now that uh, the size, I will keep it to 12 and the color, I will choose black for the color. Now I will choose to put columns here. So I'll put a column here, column everywhere. So we are doing all this so that our form will really be good looking. Okay. Okay. So the next thing is that I will we'll select everything here, then we set the outline to blue. Okay, now let us see how the form is really looking. So this is how the form is now looking. You can change the outline color for the blue rectangle that we added. So we now move on to add some couple of buttons. Okay, so the first button I will add will be the add new button. So I'll click. So you go to design controls, you click the button icon here. Now, as soon as you release your hand, you see that the command button wizard will actually pop up. So you go to record operations. Next button, when it is clicked, it's supposed to allow us to add a new record. So you go to next. Now say new parent. So that's the name. So new parent. If you wanted to use a picture for your icon, you click here, you can browse to add a new picture, but then I'm just keeping to the test. Okay, so now if a user clicks this button, we'll be allowed to add a new parent. So now let's go to new. So this button is going to do the saving for us. So I'll just go to form operations and I'll stick to refresh. So I'll go to next. Now here, I'll say save. Okay. So here, I'll put it across here. Now, let's add four more buttons. So the next one is going to be the delete button. So delete button, record, delete record. Now this, I'll stick to the icon. Okay. The next set of buttons will be the next and the forward button. So click. We add so this one has to be the back button now for that you go to record navigation so go to previous record now we stick to the icon so another one okay so here to record navigation go to next record okay next okay now we put everything here let us also maintain a uniform size, uniform sizes for the buttons. We right click. Now alignment, we choose left. Now the size, we set it to widest. You can choose to change the test size or the font size. Okay, so now here, what I will do is, I will just put a button here, change the design for the buttons by selecting everything, quick star, 
So here in quick styles, we have a lot of buttons here that you can actually use. So I will choose to go for this shape outline. I'll go for white. Now I'll save it. Okay. So we we'll go to next. Now let us preview. So this is how the form is now looking. So now once you click new, you can add a new parent. So let us say Juliana Awoya occupation let's say is a teacher so teaching address let's say edinkra new town new town town kaswa so the parent type let me stick to mother and it's a female telephone i will leave it blank email address i'll say j so i'll say j u dot 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 at outlook com now I will save it here okay so now this parent has been added to the list so if you come here and uh, refresh you see that the parent has now been added successfully for you okay so now how about if you wish to display a message to the user to signify that the parent addition is actually successful so how will you go about that so for that you go to design view now for this save button you come to events so the existing macro that is uh attached the button you delete it now you save again click this builder icon this time when you go to code builder okay now before we actually choose to accept record addition we need to ensure that the parent type is not actually set to now so we need to uh, ensure that the parent type is not set to now. So we say dim nk as integer. So if now it's a very simple macro. If it's now me dot. So if it's now me dot parent size, you will see that VBA has automatically added a space for you. Right? That's why I said in Microsoft process, if you leave the spaces out there, it's not really going to cause a problem. So if it's now me dot parent type then we display a message to the msg box that we say please specify please specify the parent type please specify the parent type so here we say pv critical then also title will be parents undefined so parents undefined okay so if it is not now then else we are going to say dcmd dot save do cmd dot refresh now we display a message again so let me copy everything that we have here because we want to display a message to communicate the success of the operation okay so here we say that parents addition to system parent addition to system is successful so it's successful now this time i say vb information that's the message box type vb information and we say that data submitted okay now because we started with if so you have to end by saying end if okay so control s to save now you hit save okay so let us check it again so everything is right in here you can also press here or click this particular icon to save your changes okay so now we are done now the next thing is that we do not really want our users to interact with this ID here. So I will select it, data, enable, I'll set it to no lock, I'll say this, yes. Okay. So now you can see that this is actually not editable for the user. So this time around, if you click save, parent addition system successful. So if you click new and you hit save, please specify the parent type. So please specify a parent type okay so now 
let's say I want to add another person. So let's say Evans Tete. Now, if I click save, information will not be saved, specify the parent type. So if I specify the parent type as a father, then fill in the details here. So let's say footballer. So address Kaswa. So town Kaswa. Okay, now I can save the information over here successfully. And as soon as I refresh, the information jumps into the table. You can also click here to navigate. Now, how about if you want to search a parent? So if you want to search a parent, what you do is you add a combo box here. So now for the form design tools, control select combo box. So I want to add it here. I will drag it here. Okay, so now there are three options. We stick to the last one. Find the record of my form based on the value I selected in my combo box. So we we'll go to this one, Ness. Now I would like to set by the names. So Ness. Okay. So Ness. Now the name I will keep. I will assign it the name Search. So the name of this the label of the combo box is going to be Search. So I click here. Now the size we change it to twelve. Now I'll stick to Times New Roman. Okay. So the color for this we are going to choose white. We go data search okay so let me drag it here neatly now let me extend it here okay so because this is a search bar i will actually choose special effects to be sunk so we save now back again so you can see now once you click here you can search you can type the name if you have a lot of them you simply have to type the name you hit enter key that searches okay so this is where the parent model is really going to end so it's now left for us to have other forms for the class and department so how do we do that now we are just going to replicate this form that we have here so control c to copy or you can right click so let's copy Control V to paste. Now I'll say class classes. I'll paste again Control V. Now I'll say department. Okay, so this is indeed going to speed up the development process. Okay, so we open to classes. We go to design view. Now this time I click here. First thing is I change the record source to the class table. So you click here, you see all the tables assigned to class. So the next thing is you can choose to remove everything that you have over here so you can choose to remove everything that you have over here or else now in the class team we see that we have only three items here so for us not to be confused i remove everything now we would like to remove this one also so what i will do now is to add existing fields class id class title and the departments i'll bring all of them here okay so now that you have it here you have to extend it a bit now right click size key to widest so here too now let me narrow this a bit because this is going to be a very little form okay so let us extend it a bit here now i'll bring the right angle to the top okay so we select here now times new roman and i'm sticking to size 12. so the color we stick to black okay so now we put the columns here put the columns here as such okay now we set your color name d okay now the next thing is i can see that the buttons are really grayed out so that is what happens each time that you copy and paste a form now to fix this you select so before then you have to disable this now double click here to bring the property sheet select everything that you have right here now go to the formats so here hover color you type h highlight here to highlight now it's zero 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 you save it now because this save button 
when we go to the events here you will see that there's this knife now so we wouldn't need any of these things but then all that we need we need so we will need the message box the last part and if we didn't need any and if but then the message will now be so we will just say changes to db table success data submitted now we see okay so now let us preview the form once more so you can see that we are writing here and here too we don't want to say new parents so we just simply say new okay so you can choose to add a label here so let's say we want to add a label here we add it here as you can say class management okay now we can just change the color here to white then the color here also to for so the size to 14 the type times new roman here okay now let's preview to see how good it is really looking okay so we are on track now parents the caption for the form is still parents so how do we change that so you go to design view now here caption you set it to classes or anything so this time around once you preview you are actually good to go so you click new now you can add fresh department so nursery then you see changes to db table success so now once you go to the classes table you can see that we have crash also over there so let me add one more class new so let's say class class 4 so class 4 department primary now we save so class 4 is now in the primary department so we save it and it's neatly saved you can choose to navigate okay so going forward we will be looking at how to show all the students in a particular class okay so now that we have this the next thing is for you to also replicate the class table so we copy and paste now we change it to department because you're already familiar with the steps that is the reason why i actually did it so fast so department so we already have departments so now what i will do is because the classes form and department form are going to have more resemblance or some kind of resemblance i will choose to remove the departments so how do you remove a form you can highlight it and hit the delete key or you right click and you hit delete now removed so classes now i want to replicate this particular form so mm -hmm. right click copy control v to paste and you say department okay so here we go to the design view once more now the department table it is not set to the form yet so like we did we click here caption i'll say department mm -hmm. now record source you go to data tab record source you select department so it means that the record source of this form has been changed from the classes table to department okay now let us once you click add existing you can see all the fields in the department table so what i will do is that i will remove this because we have only two items there now over here i'm going to say department number or id here i'll say title so title of the department you can see there are some green star there's some green indication at the top here meaning that the class id field here cannot be found in this table so how do we change this so we click here and we set it to department id now we click title also and we set it to department name so now we are good to go the next thing is for us to select all our forms go to formats so the first two hover color and press color you say it highlights highlight the rest is set up to zero 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 so zero 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 now you see okay so this time round you can i can choose to show my navigation 
buttons so that we can actually do some search and survey else if you don't really want to show this then it helps you just go through and just use a combo box instead but then if you set it then you can just search some departments out here okay so you can do the same thing to the class whichever one uh, that you prefer if you don't want to use a navigation uh, bar here then you just have to add a combo box also to it here so now we are good to go but then classes management we have to change it to department so we say department in school okay so now we are done now let me click here new and i'll add a new department called preschool so preschool i will save so once i come to departments now you can see that the changes have uh, the changes have reflected in the table successfully for us okay so we are still moving uh we are still reminding you that the video this tutorial is away it's going to be a little bit lengthy so i believe you still you've still got your cup of tea or your liquid food with you out there okay so we move okay so now the next thing is for us to create the student table so the student table which is a primary focus of this particular system so now we are good to go we we'll go to create database tools sorry uh, data let's let me close it so create table design now we say so here we just says id so id this will be the auto number field but then we'll be uh, generating some custom id for each student so this one is going to be the primary key so we make it the primary key okay so now we'll say first name of the students so you can set a caption we have last name caption now we say gender so the gender is going to be a lookup so you go to lookup wizard we choose i will type in the values that i want to go to next so here we say male female now next you hit limitless click finish okay so now we will need a date of birth so we say birth dates so birth dates the data type is going to be date or time okay so the birth date date or time now we need to set some validation rule so validation is actually a way of controlling data inputs in a system you can do validation in excel and then microsoft access also so what validation does is that it takes the input of the user and subject it to some existing criteria rule set by the developer if it is actually correct then the data has to be accepted so you know that birth of date or sorry the birth date needs to be um an earlier date than i mean the days we calculate for ourselves so the rule has to be less than dates and the dates function in microsoft access alone outputs today's dates so whichever date of birth that you enter out there the rule is that has to be less than the dates we found ourselves here so now what is the validation test if a user breaches this rule what must be the message so we say sorry you entered an incorrect date of birth for the student so enter again then you save S sorry now let us save the table we right click here save now we we'll say students tv okay so now we have the first name the last name the gender the birth date so these students to we are going to say address so because sometimes the students will be living uh, at different places from their parents so we say address is also a short test okay now we will take the hobby of the students so your hobby okay so now that we've done this we would also need to um 
So we need to assign the student to a class. So for now, I will just be taking this few information. But then before then, let me take the photo of the student. So we say photo. And now for the photo, the data type will need to be attachments. Okay. So the data type will need to be attachments. Okay. Now, we are going to assign the student to classes and because already the classes have been assigned departments we wouldn't need to assign a student to departments again so automatically if i send a student to a class it takes the department also okay so now here we are going to say class so what is a class or class or stage now this is the data type has to be a number because it is going to be a lookup so here you come to lookup so we select here you click combo box now let us set the rule source so we click the builder icon all right so we are going to fetch the records from the or the options from the class table so we go to classes we add a class id and a class title now control s to save we close it okay so now column counts need to be two because you have two columns there now column width as usual is zero one because we would not like to show the class id so now we'll do the same thing for parents so we say now the parent there are two type of parents so for every child we say mother so what is a mother and this one too has to be a number and then let's do the same thing for the father so we say father okay so now let's do that of the mother first so we say combo box now you hit enter rule source build an icon so parent here now you add parent name sorry before then we add the id parent name here okay now we are going to add parent type so the parent type will not show it in the query but then the criteria because this one is for mother we will say mother so only mother it will filter to display only the mothers in the system okay so now column counts we say two now column width we say zero one okay so let's do the same thing for the father combo box now rule source so the, what just as we did for the mother id parent name and now parent type but then parent type will not show it in the query and the type is going to be father okay so we save it now we have to close it so column count we select two now zero one okay so let us click here to see what we've actually done so far so if you click here you can see that we have only the mothers here and once you come here too we have only the fathers over here so if you add a new parent and this if you depend on the type of the parent it will actually come in over here as such okay now like i said there has to be a custom id there has to be some custom id for every child so we are going to build a custom id for every child before we start adding records but then for you to really get what we are doing let us add some records here so first student i will say cynthia so cynthia is a gender is a female birth date let's say 20th of november 2000 so you can see now it is accepted Assuming you entered 2022, it will not be accepted. You entered an incorrect date, so the date has to be earlier. Okay. So address, let's say, Poku Ase. Now hobby, dancing, comma, music. Okay. So we don't have any photo here. Now we are sending to class one. So the mother, let's say, Mary. Now the father, let's say, Akusmaila. We refresh here okay so this child has been added now the next person is desmond 
So let's say Desmond Okufo is a male. So let's say 11th June 2010. This one is in Accra. So we have few fields here. You can choose to feel free and add more fields. So let's say sports. Now class, let me add this to class three. So mother Juliana, then father Ivan Stete. Now we save it here. Okay. So next thing is for us to uh, define the custom ID here. So we are going to do that right over here. We're going to click to add calculated. Now we choose test. Okay. So we are going to say equal to ID of the child and now I will extract the first three uh, letters of the last name. So we will say left last name comma. I will need only the three first three. Now I will blend that with the, the date of birth. So I will say day of the birth date. Now we close that, then we blend that with the month number. So the month number of the birth date. So we blend that with the year of the birth date. Okay, so now this is going to be a robust ID that we've defined over here. So the ID is going to take the student's ID number, then first three letters of the last name, then date of birth uh, with the month, day the day, month, and the year. So let us hit OK. So now, let me give the name over here. So I'll say student code. So now, no matter the amount of information you will enter in this particular system, this ID generation is going to be unique because the ID here will be different at every stage. So this is the, this is my, this is a Desmond's ID. This is the person's ID as such. Okay, so now that we have this, the next stage is for us to display the first name, the last name, we put everything together. Then also, we can generate some birth date. So now we go to click to add calculated test again. So now, this is what I will do. I will say upper, so, uppercase so now I'll say uppercase first name and I'll separate with a comma then end again uppercase last name okay so we are done let's hit ok and now we can choose to save it as student's name so you can see that the names of the students have been put together for us. But then there is no space. So we highlight it as it is here, field. You go to modify expression. Now, before we bring the uh, the last name, uppercase of the last name, we'll choose end space here, then ampersand. So we ampersand with the space before the whole thing. Okay, so now we are here. Let us add one more student. So let's come here. So we say Lydia Dugan, female. Now let's say 12th of March 2012. Kaswa. So let's say dancing, singing. So class, let's say this is in class three as such. Parents is Mary. So Akosmaila. Now, once you refresh, so you can see that the data has been saved for you automatically. Okay, now the next thing is that we are going to calculate uh, the birth dates. Now, for us to get access to the birth date function or the date date function, we need to use a query. So, we close this, we go to create query design. Now, we add a student's table here. So I will click here to add everything. Okay, so now the next thing that I will do is that I will add this birth date again, but I will not show it. I will go to a new column, right click, go to build. Okay, so here, this is where we are going to type 
the age so we say age so age we already have the birthday so we are going to calculate the ages so age so age now we are going to say date diff now choose to calculate the months comma so what is the first date so the first date has to be the date that a person was actually born so we will say birth dates so birth dates comma today's dates or the current dates so we end it now let us save it we run okay so now you can see that it has given us the number of months it lasts between today's date and a person's the student's what uh, date of birth so how do we display it in years we simply need to go back and modify the expression here design view now you put everything in a bracket round bracket and then you divide by 12 so this will give us the number of so this child is 21.8 months this one is also 12 point uh positive three months then this one is also so we are going to round it to one decimal places so we go to design view now formats you click here so what we are going to sorry we just need a decimal places we set it to one now we save so let us save this query save now we say students extended okay so now we save and as you can see so still our decimal places are not working let's go out there and modify it again so h decimal place now let me select standard usually it works with standard so if let's see okay so now 21.8 12.25 out there okay so if you click inside you see the full uh decimal places okay so now we are actually uh good to go the next stage is for us to create a form and already we have our form layout defined here so we are going to use that of the parents so i'll right click copy control v now say students info okay so let's go to the design view first thing we are going to work on these buttons okay so now the buttons are showing clearly so instead of new parents you say new students now before we set a record source let us do away with this now for this form i will enlarge it a bit so for now remove this here okay i'll put this one here i will do it with everything that we have in here now we change the record source data record source now you change it to students extended because that contains the new information that we just added okay before we add the fields let us set a caption here to students management or students so let's say student profile that will be the best name okay so we are going now we click here add and we select everything here so you hit the control key whilst you click the fields so we click all of them for now we will not add the photo to mother student school student's name age okay so now we put all of them to this particular form that we have here okay so the next step is for us to extend it a bit so we are keep on extending it here so we put this one also here size we set it to widest now we stretch it across neatly here okay so if you do this now you can choose to extend it okay so we have our students here now i'll pull these items here the buttons will now be here so let me close this gap but this one is too lengthy okay 
so we add it here now we are going to add the picture of the child so we add a picture here and the name which will be photo okay so we extend it here now let us enlarge everything we keep on stretching it downwards like this okay so let us stretch it okay so we extend it okay so now we select everything here the size needs to be black and then also let us stick to font size 12. now here outline we set it to blue now we can choose to push this one closer a little bit and then as usual we bring our rectangle here to improve the design okay so now that we are here let us fold the color with the blue outline i will choose white double click here so that we can get access to the property sheet now horizontal anchor we set it to bolts okay so now we are here okay so now this picture icon the top i'll fill is a black color shape outline i'll choose now let me use 14 and the color i'll stick to white and i'll center everything now when a picture is inserted we would like it to stretch across so we select it picture size mode we come to stretch okay so now let us get out there to see how this is looking so we'll go to form view and now impressively this is how the student profile is actually looking which is not bad now the next thing that we need to do is to add the student code to the top here plus the student's full name so we select student code and then the student's name i'll cut control x to cut control v to paste okay so now we put it here and then we choose to also cut the photo and add it here neatly as such so you add a photo also here okay so now you can see that this is not showing well so we click here and we set it to white okay so now having got this now the age needs to come just below the birth date okay so we have enough spaces to pull out these things or the buttons okay all right so now let us see how good it is looking so now this is how far we've actually managed to come so the next thing that we will have to do we can choose to change the color design here we have varieties of colors that you can actually choose from so we can but then we are just taking to a uniform design here so let me change this color to yellow okay so now we can choose to add a rectangle there so we add a rectangle here neatly and now this rectangle especially if you select sync and let's see how good it is looking so now this is what we've actually managed to do okay now this needs to really look like a picture so what do we do here design view you click here insert image you browse so we are going to add a photo icon so let's go to pictures so right in pictures now let's say we want to use this okay 
now you see so preview the form once more and now you can see it's actually looking like indeed a student profile if you want to add a picture you double click here and then you browse to add a picture and this will actually go away so you click new students then you add a record here so let us set the alignment because some of them are to the right some of them are to the left so you select everything here now left align so now you make sure that the age you come and set the decimal places make sure it's one so now okay we are good to go so let me add a new student so let's say charles donko sorry charles so donko so now you see the name has been waiting for you at the top there charles donko gender is a male birth dates let's say 12 april and it did not come so so let me say 2012 so 2012 to now is 10.4 months which is actually true address let's say Pukwase, new town hobby let's say dancing so the class let's say class three so dancing mother i'll choose mary i'll choose now I'll save okay so this time i can see that there's an error because this parent type is no longer in uh, in the table that we're actually dealing with now which is a student table so we delete everything here now if you click just issue a message saying student is successfully registered in school okay so data submitted is okay now okay we are done the bargain so if you hit charles donko is now added to your system and if you go to students you see that charles donko has been added up over there so let us add one more student new student so let's say adwa mary gender male birth date let's say 12 june 2013 address let's say kaswa music class t so the stage let me add ghs1 now mary of course so i will save it over here now once you come and refresh you see that it's actually pop up over here okay so one more thing now once you are over here it's also possible for you to navigate straight out to the parent table too because if the parent is not here the person is supposed to or the user is supposed to be able to assign this parent to uh, that the, the student to a class parent or this a class of parents so how can you move directly from this form to the class and then the parents form so you come in here now you click our thing so now this is what we'll do we will not we'll just choose to open and once you click here you open to open a form and you want to open which form so you're going to open parents form so next open the form and find specific business display no and show all the records yes so here okay so we copy and we paste for the father also so let us minimize and shrink the sizes a bit okay so we we'll do the same thing here okay so now here you can choose to change the size and then the design as such so now you can set a label here by go by coming in here so you have control tip so you can say go to add new parents go to add new parents so you can do the same thing for the second one also for the sake of time i wouldn't be doing that so the class two you can do the same thing so the class you can do the same thing you click here button so button here you go to form operations open now classes okay so we show all records indeed 
So here too, you minimize it as such. Okay, so now let's see. As soon as you come in here, you can click here, and here you come to the class, you can add a new class. If the parent is not there, you simply have to add a parent and here. You simply have to add a parent and it's automatically reflect or pop up right in here. Now, the next thing that we'll be doing is to print a student profile because it is part of our objective to be able to be able to assign students to classes, students to departments, students and parents. So how do we print the reports? Okay, so I'll close here. Now, quickly, we will open the student extended. So, we are going to create a very simple report. Now, we go to create report wizard. So, we're going to add everything here nest, nest. We let us sort by the ID. Now, we go to nest. So, this is not a tabular report. If you want to use a tabular, it means we're going to generate a class list. So, column now, nest. Now, preview the reports. The wizard is unable to treat my reports. Wow, what happened? Okay, so for some reasons, the user had not been able to print my reports. Uh, let me close it. Okay, so now we are going to create a blank report. So let's go to create, let's use a blank report approach. Now we come in here, blank reports. So let's control as you see and say students. Okay, so now go to design view. First thing is that you assign this report to a record source, and record source is student extended. Okay. So that first thing you have to do is to add the details of the school here. So first thing, let us add some logo. So let's say for instance, uh, let's say for instance, let's say for instance this will be our logo so we click and we add it up here neatly so disclaimer this particular logo is not mine it is someone's logo that we are using so size must stretch out okay now let us add some labels here so let's say data tech technology school okay so control s now control c to copy control v to paste okay so this one we are going to really make it very large because that is the name of the school so it's pretty very large here now over here so here we're actually going to change so we're actually going to change so let's say location so location let's say Kumase in USD now address address let's say DT box 99 okay so we save this so now let's say email of the school data text or we can say data works let me use my personal email so let's say data text 10 at gmail.com okay so now what we'll do is that we change the color here to black now this one we change it to black but we bold it okay so the next thing is for us to add some rectangle so i really fancy rectangles a lot so i'll add some rectangle here now right click position you send to back and then the shape fill we set it to transparent, but then the shape outline thickness we set it to then the color we use black. Okay. So now the next thing is that we add the student information. So add existing fields we need. So the first thing is that we need a student school. First name, last name, 
gender, birth dates, address, hobby, so class, mother, father, school name, age. Okay, so now that we have everything here, what we'll do is we select all of them, we we'll bring them to the top here. So this is going to be a very simple profile. So we add all the information. Now let me stretch it out across here. So right click, size we select widest. Okay, so now the student name, I'll bring it to the top here. And then, so the student name, okay. Then I'll add the code also to it. Okay, so now the next thing is for us to set. So over here. So let us add some labels. So the first label we'll add, we are going to say students referentials. So students referentials, center align, control C to copy, control V to paste. Now we will need some here. Before then, let me pull this one all to the down. Okay, so here we say personal information okay now that we are done let us leave some space out there okay meanwhile the picture of the student hasn't actually come so we leave a space for that here so because for the sake of that let us put everything to the scanner okay so i remove this icon now we stretch it out a bit Okay, so this is what we do. Now we click here. The size here we're going to stretch. Okay. Now what I will do next is to set the colors and then the sizes and the so the font color we set it to 12. Black is okay. Okay, so now what we do is we are going to bold these parts. So we bold these parts. We go this and then also we go this as such. Now, here shape fill we choose transparent, but then the outline we're going to select black. We do same thing here outline black, but then the shape fill we select transparent. Okay, so over here the line thickness select thicker black. Okay, so we select it, shape outline we stick to black. Okay, so now let us preview the form to see how good it is looking. So this is how good the form is really looking. So this is quite okay, but then let's make it a pop-up form. So we click here. Now pop-up, we set it to yes. Okay, so pop-up, we set it to yes. Now you save it. And now you can see that these are the student profiles. Okay. So the next thing is I set the proper alignments. So we click here, alignments, set it neatly here. Okay. So now let me show you an anomaly on this particular report. When it opens, it has to come to the center, and then as we have to get rid of this particular gray bar here. So we go to design view. So here, formats. Now but what is causing the gray bar is the screw bars. So we set it to only vertical. And then also right click here. Alternate full color, we set it to none. Now when it opens, it starts to come to the center. So auto center here, we set it to yes. Okay, so now let me close this. Let me close everything and open this report. And you can see now it has opened to the center. So this is, these are your student profiles. Okay. So, indeed, this is a lengthy tutorial. Okay, so how do we then print? So, we have to also insert a logo here so that for students without pictures, there are some catchy logo we show. So, we're going to insert image that we display this there. Okay, 
So now we have this for the students. But as soon as you upload a photo, it will actually go away. I don't want to get any sort of copyright issue, so I'll be keeping it blank. But then you have to, you can actually choose to upload photos there. Okay, so now let us add buttons finally. So we come in here. Now the first button you're going to say print preview. So I'll select copy and I'll paste. So here I will say print. Okay. Now for print preview, I'll right click build events. I'll use a macro. Now I will say print preview. Sorry, print the command is print preview enter then it has to maximize it so maximize the window okay now here this is print so right click go to print now here you say print objects so you save as such okay so now let us see something here so as soon as the print preview so this is the first report second report third report okay so now we would like to open directly from the students profile straight out to the form so what do we do now we are going to use the id so we click to add other id here so this id but then we wouldn't really need it so i will click i will select both the label and the, and the the control visible or set it to no so although it is added to the form but then it would not appear so preview now you can see it is not there so let's go to the student profile so what i'll do is i'll click to insert i have a print icon a very nice print icon that you would love so i'll bring it there okay so now here it is so size mode let's make it stretch out okay and then also right click special effects sunk okay so now having done this we want to open directly to the student profile go to macro open reports now what's the report's name student so now the work condition you say equal to id tap this equal to end id again now you enclose it as i'm doing here from the back of the ID up to where the, the end of the equals, you put it in quotation, close. Okay, so with some word of prayer, we test out the effect of everything. So now we hit, and you can see it has opened the profile for us. So if we go to Nest, and you can see it has also opened this one for us. Nest, Lydia. So this is Lydia's information, print preview. Now it opens to only Lydia's information for you. Okay so now we've achieved success but then just as we added a combo box out there you can also add your own combo box to search for information right in here so now let me set a picture so let me use so let me use so let's say so let's say this is a picture we would like to use. So I don't want to incur any copyright issue. So let's say this is the picture we would like to use. So we hit OK. In fact, this is not nice. So let us leave this. But then just test it out. Once you add any picture, it will actually show out the automatically so let me remove this so i don't want to yes because of this i've been carrying a whole lot of copyright issues even if you have some pictures pictures okay so now that is that you can easily add a student and then assign the student and then print the student profile as such okay so now a quick one okay so we will not be doing much we'll be i'll be recording another tutorial whereby we'll be looking at the major media reporting reports that we can generate from the system so now um, this has indeed be a learning video i will choose to end the tutorial over here so now in the next episode of this particular tutorial i will be showing you 
or taking you through how to display students in a particular class and then also how to display students in a particular department how to find students attached to a particular period so we'll be doing that in the next tutorial stay tuned to data text tutorial if you've not subscribed subscribe if you have any question that you would like to put across feel free put it in the comment section if you had also like to communicate with me directly find my contacts at the description of this particular video and then also better have a conversation thank you see you in the next video